Hello, and welcome to another episode of Darwin Investors. Man, what a crazy day on the market today. I can't believe the NASDAQ actually finished green, led by semiconductors and driven by Taiwan Semi. You know, they, they, they played all their cards face up going into earnings, so you knew that they were going to have a good day, but I didn't think it would be like this. I made some money. I hope you guys did too. Um, I didn't make as much as I could have. I got really spooked with all the bad stuff that happened earlier today. And then, um, but in the middle of all that, there was a little green shoot. There was a little article that came out that was very much overlooked because there was all that bad news. And bad news is what prints and bad news is what leads. But I try and find the good news. I try and find that money. And I did find a company that I think is going to report bang on earnings in two weeks. So it's something to keep an eye on. And, and I'll let you know how I'm going to play it. So the day started off amazing. You know, I got up this morning and I saw this earnings report and I was like so pleased. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor top second quarter targets guides higher. The chip foundry earned $1.55 per share on sales of $18.16 billion. Analysts were only expecting $1.44 and $17.68 billion. It was a, a 67% increase year over year and they guided higher. They actually were guiding for $20.2 billion when Wall Street was only expecting $18.66 billion. So I thought that Taiwan Semi was headed to the moon. And then came all the bad news. So next, JP Morgan reports, it says, JP Morgan Chase earnings fell, fell 28% after building reserves for bad loans and bank suspends buybacks. I'm like, oh, great. Um, and it's because I had a put sold on them. I'll show you where my strike, I'll show you how that came out. Uh, Jamie Dimon warns geopolitical tensions, high inflation and waning consumer confidence could hurt the economy sometime down the road. They reported $2.76 a share versus $2.88 expected. And they got revenue of $31.63 billion versus $31.95 expected. And this was due to weaker than expected uh, investment banking revenue. And also because they had to like put in $2 billion to, into their coffers in order to protect themselves from bad loans. When last year they were withdrawing $3 billion because they felt safe enough to do that sort of thing. And they also said that um, they had to temporarily suspend their share repurchase and they weren't able to boost their dividend payouts. So it's like, okay, this is not looking good. And then after that, Morgan Stanley comes out and says, Morgan Stanley misses analyst estimates on worse than expected investment banking revenue, not miles apart from what happened to JP Morgan. However, they did say that they were gonna do some stock buybacks and that was actually a big bonus and helped that company uh, not fall as far as JP Morgan did th this morning. It also didn't hurt that the bank's investment banking revenue decline was expected. People expected that to happen. When they reported, they reported $1.39 EPS versus 153 expected. Their, their revenue was 13.13 versus $13.48 billion expected. Their profit dropped 29% to $2.5 billion from $3.51 billion, and their revenue fell 11%. And then after that, the PPI came out, and this was supposed to be the thing I was expecting to lift the market, and it only drove it further down because this was a miserable print. Wholesale prices shoot up near record, 11.3% in June, on surge in energy costs. The producer price index was 11.3% from a year ago in June, near the record 11.6% posted in March. Um, jobless claims jumped to 244,000 last week, the highest level since November 2021. The producer price index, a measure of the prices received for final demand products, increased 11.3% from a year ago, the highest reading since 11.6% in March. Of that gain, almost 90% came from a 10% increase in final demand energy costs as prices for oil, natural gas, and other products soared during the month. See, see, I was hoping that the PPI would come down this month, but because I thought it was like a it was going to project out to the next CPI. But as it turns out, it's just another lagging indicator as well. 
That was terrible news. And then after that, traders are betting the Fed could raise interest rates by a full percentage point this month. Traders are betting the Federal Reserve could raise its target Fed fund rate by one percentage point at its July 26th and 27th meeting. And I'll, by the way, the day after that on July 28th, that's when the GDP print comes out and that should be really interesting. So we're gonna get a 1% raise the day before the GDP print comes out and then says, okay, now you're in a recession. You know, if the market can take the next two weeks of earnings like this, and it can take high inflation, PPI reads like that, it can take interest rate hikes on the 27th and us going into a recession, and it doesn't completely tank the market. Folks, we have hit a bottom. And then the next article that I saw was, these are the America's 10 cheapest states to live in as inflation surges. I'm like, oh, geez. Now we're talking about we got to move to the cheapest places. Cheapest states turn out to be Arkansas, uh, Indiana, West Virginia, Iowa, Missouri, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Kansas, and Mississippi. This looks pretty good. You had me at cheap Kansas, but now you got me sold at steak. That looks all right to me. Yeah, go go Kansas. So how'd I end up doing today? Well, I ended up only up $195. I really could have cleaned up. But what I ended up doing was I panicked. See, so all that bad news came out. And then Taiwan Semi goes, wow, like that's like straight down, right? And um, what did it bottom out at? $80.62. You ready for this? That stock bottomed at $80.62. I managed to sell it for $80.60 <laughs> today. So don't ask me how I did sell it at lower than the bottom. But folks, this is why I'm not a gambler. But um, I sold that, but I did make some money on my uh, Taiwan Semi put. I made 47 bucks there. I had two covered calls uh, that I got back for 117 Plus I closed out some of my other short positions today. I closed out uh, uh, Morgan Stanley for about 15 bucks and I actually lost money on JP Morgan, lost uh, $33 because I panicked. But, but with all that bad news out there, who could blame me? So how did I do, how have I done so far this week? Well, it looks like I am up $588 on my trades this week. And this month I'm up, about $923. And I'm thinking this is going to be a really good month because I have another play and it's going to happen before the end of the month. Plus I have a couple plays next week, but I'll do a video about those over the weekend. And then amongst all of this bad news. So what was that shoot of green grass that I saw today? Amazon says more than 300 million items were sold during the biggest Prime Day event. Now, this in of itself is just one thing. It's sort of like with Taiwan Semi, you know, it was like before that, you know, Samsung reported and before that Qualcomm reported. So it looked like semiconductor stocks were doing pretty well. And so you could kind of extrapolate that Taiwan Semi was going to do well. Well, there's other things that were coming up showing that Amazon was going to do pretty well. One, people have jobs. Two, they may not be buying houses and cars, but they are buying smaller ticket items. And it, re it remains to be seen whether they're actually buying iPhones. I'm beginning to think maybe we are buying iPhones, but we'll see uh, soon enough when Apple reports. So this was the biggest Prime Day event ever for Amazon. They sold more than 300 million items worldwide during a two-day discount bonanza. Amazon shoppers bought more than 300 million items during this year's Prime Day sale, up from 250 million in 2021, making it the biggest Prime Day event in Amazon's history. They were, they were purchasing more than 100,000 items per minute during the discount bonanza. And this is the thing that I think is really interesting right here. The top selling categories in the US were consumer electronics, home goods, and Amazon branded devices. Okay, so this is the first time I'm reading that we're actually buying consumer electronics in quite a while. I mean, because most of the time people are saying that nobody's buying this stuff right now, but according to Amazon, we are. So that's very encouraging for if you have like, um, uh, semiconductor stocks, if you like have Apple, if you have Microsoft, if you have any sort of tech, we are buying tech right now. But this isn't just the only thing that come out here recently that says that we're buying stuff. A couple of weeks ago, Levi's put out something that said Levi's 
Strauss hikes dividend as second quarter earnings exceed expectations. So this is the second time now in a week that we're finding that we're out there buying this stuff. People are going back to work. They have to buy pants, you know, but we're, but we also have jobs and we have money to buy stuff like this. The clothing retailer affirmed its 2022 guidance for net revenue increased 11% to 13% compared to 2021. They reported $1.47 billion in revenue versus $1.43 billion expected. Their earnings per share were $0.29 cents adjusted versus $0.23 cents expected, and they lifted up their dividend. So this is the second time now in a week we're seeing that people are buying things. So let's look at the risks that I see associated with Amazon. Um, the biggest risk that I see with Amazon, and there's two, but the bigger one is this one. They announce on July 28th after market close. Okay, so at least it won't be affected until July 29th. But remember, the Fed is expected to hike rates on the 26th and 27th, and the GDP print comes out on the 28th that's going to show that we're in a recession. Plus, it's going to be a weird recession where we have low unemployment, so there's going to be an argument over whether or not we're going to have recession, and people are going to be up in arms. They're going to say, oh, um, this is political. We have a recession versus other people saying, no, we don't have a recession because they're going to call it a technical recession. And in the midst of all that, Amazon's going to report earnings. So I see that as a red flag and something I'll be keeping an eye on. And then the other problem that we have is that um, when you look at their last 10Q, and this one uh, closed out on April 28, 22, for the quarter ended on March 31st, 22. And um, one of the problems they had is they're heavily invested in Rivian Automotive. They have a very large stake in that company. And during last quarter, they lost $3.8 billion or $7.56 per diluted share. The first quarter 2022 net loss includes a pre-tax valuation loss of $7.6 billion in non-operating expense from their Rivian common stock. So they're losing a ton of money with all of their Rivian stock. Now remember, we said that this uh, quarter ended on March 31st, 2022. And so when we go back to April 1st, Rivian was $46.44, and then their quarter would end on June 30th. And on that day, it would, it would have been pretty much the lowest point ever, one of them for Rivian at $25.74. So that's about, about a 40% decrease in the, in the stock price there. So it's, I'm going to be interested in seeing how that's going to play in Amazon's earnings. But Amazon has been streamlining their business. They have been closing down warehouses. They have been cutting staff. Um, they are trying to tighten things up a little bit. And of course, they're having a lot of sales. It's Amazon. So it's going to be interesting to see how this company uh performs in this quarter. But I will say that I am bullish on Rivian in the long run. I, I'm just bull, bullish on EVs in general. I, I recently, I got a Tesla and uh, just a used one. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, A, the performance of that car and B, the not having to put gasoline in the car. And I saw that uh, GM today, they're actually going to make a supercharger network of their own. And so once these supercharger networks are all over America, uh, based on the experience I'm having with my EV, I can't imagine that, that everybody wouldn't love one if they had one. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go out and hug a tree right now. Hello, tree. All right, that tree has been hugged. I wonder if it was good for that tree as it was for me. And another stock that I'm looking forward to their earnings is going to be Macy's. Now, Macy's is um, like Levi's, like Amazon. They sell kind of smaller ticket items. Um, they do sell Levi's. They sell uh, Calvin Klein. They got Polo in there. It's everything under one roof. Plus, they have a really robust um, e-commerce business, one that doesn't get a lot of credit. But one that like every time they report earnings shows that it's it's a very good online business that they're running right now. And so that's something that's a little bit overlooked at a Macy's. Now, when we look at them, we can see they're trading at a price to earnings ratio of about three with a dividend yield of 3.87%. And they actually do um, a lot of share repurchases. I think they um, they authorized two billion dollars in share repurchases. Um, this year, which at $16.26 is a lot of shares of Macy's. Um, I'm not quite as bullish on them as I am 
of Amazon obvious for obvious reasons, but I am going to dip my toes into Macy's and I am going to like figure out what the implied move is of Amazon prior to their reporting and kind of trade around that. I'll probably do similar to what I did for Taiwan Semi, only this time I'll try and make a little bit more money than, I think I ended up making like $330 off of Taiwan Semi, which if I had held it, I'd, I'd have made like a thousand. And, but you know, whatever, I was spooked, I got scared, and I do like to just take that money when I'm up. It's one of my faults here. All right, that's gonna do it for tonight. Yeah, if you got anything on this video, just uh, like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell. Or if you just wanna follow me and see if I make or lose a whole bunch of money trying to find uh, little deals or like places to put money in this, this train wreck of a stock market that we're in right now. It is fun for me to try and do, and I have been making money this year in my trading. Not so much in my investing, but my trading I've been doing just fine. <laughs> I probably should have just never invested anything, just kept on trading. But all right, until then, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.